Your world building is unique, yes, but your characters are what really sell your story. Mariah Richards. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Ho. And I'm Lee Esses. On today's episode, we are jumping right into the world building and the nitty gritty, really, of world building. One of the pillars of storytelling. This whole month, we are talking about world building. Next month will be character and then after that plot. So even though today's episode kind of feels like it belongs in the character, We are talking about seeing the world through your character's eyes and exploring the world that way. Because honestly, the best way that you can show your world to your readers is by doing it through your characters. By doing that, you can give personality to your world. You can give a reason to be showing off your world because nobody wants to read a block of text with no personal connection about the description of a tree. If I want to represent the destruction of a town, I don't want to just say there are bodies everywhere. I want to show that tiny little doll that shows they murdered a bunch of children as well. So by making your world building personal, you make it feel like it matters. The key here is emotional context. Not just that something is broken, but something that is important to your character is broken. That's something that your readers will remember and they will understand about the world as a whole. So if your character really hates the color pink, it's going to notice a pink everywhere. And your reader is going to be more in tune with that world because of the filter and the lens of the point of view character in that moment. One of the reasons why this is an important concept to keep in mind as you write is because your readers don't actually care about your world until after they've finished the book, until after they've experienced the world. That's when you start to fall in love with Middle Earth and with Narnia is because you've lived a story within that realm. In the best case scenario, your reader will care about the main characters, the point of view characters, the heroes of your story. And by connecting your heroes to the world, by showing us the world through them, you start to let your readers care about the world. I think Tolkien is a perfect example of this. We see the Shire through how the hobbits experience it. How many of us would give up everything to go live in the Shire and eat their food? Absolutely. So you as an author, it is your job to understand whatever this world building that you're trying to cram into your story, how that affects your point of view character and what opinions your point of view character has on that bit of world building. Is it their favorite holiday? Does it tap into some deep seated fears for your character? Whatever it is, giving your point of view characters opinions will help your reader connect with the world. One of the first ways that you can use this idea of connecting your characters with your world, showing the world through your characters, is to learn through the characters. Have your character be learning and experiencing and exploring the world around them because then they can act as a parallel to your reader who is doing the same things through that character. Readers experience the world in real time if you do it this way instead of being told about past events. Also understand that what's happening to other characters in far distant places, yes, that is part of world building. It's not important to your character who the readers are emotionally attaching themselves to. Therefore, it's not as interesting to the readers. Take the Lord of the Rings, for example. In the book itself, we start out by experiencing life with the hobbits. We go to Bilbo's party and we start to get into the world in that way. And I think that is one of the highlights of the books versus the movies is that we do have that like personal connection to the world that we're getting into before we start getting into the big major conflicts. Whereas the movie starts with here's all of the backstory that you need to know and the world is changing because the one ring blah blah blah. Yes, it is set up beautifully. Yes, it is a work of art. I absolutely love the movies. But 
there's no personal connection for me when I first started watching that movie to care about this weird ring that was lost and apparently has magic powers. I think a lot of that issue comes back to the opinions. If we had heard some of Galadriel's opinions about Elrond being a moron and not just like football tackling this guy off the edge of the cliff, if we had had those opinions, then we would have started to see Galadriel be the main character, which is why they didn't do that. It's still difficult because it's history, but if she had inserted opinions, we would have started to see her be the main character. And that's really what it comes down to is your point of view character needs to care about what's happening before your reader will. The next way that you can work the idea of having your character learn into the story is through dialogue. However, dialogue is a double-edged sword in world building. You need to have the character be learning something and not having a character regurgitate something everyone already knows. Well, you know Christmas, our most famous and highly celebrated holiday in the year? Uh... Yeah. This is incredibly boring and uninteresting dialogue. No one's learning anything. This is an example of bad dialogue, especially if you're trying to world build through that. Better dialogue would be something like this. You know today's National Burrito Day? Is it? I was craving sushi, though. sushi Rito. Those were a thing? Absolutely. <laughs> Your main character is learning something in this conversation that makes the conversation interesting because now your reader and your listeners now know it's National Burrito Day. But that has to be something that wouldn't be common knowledge to that character. If that character has a calendar of national days, that conversation wouldn't be nearly as interesting. If you're using a very well-known holiday in the area and your character grew up around it, not as interesting. If you're writing a portal fantasy and they are first being introduced to the idea of Christmas, absolutely that is fascinating. Finally, learning does help with a couple of different problems that you run into when you're trying to convey world building to your readers. One of which is it will help you slow down the pacing and keep it interesting because this scene we're learning about this and then tomorrow the next chapter we're going to learn about something else it's much easier to pace yourself as a storyteller instead of info dumping, especially at the beginning, because then your character is forced to learn it as it's relevant to the story, not just as you as the author comes up with it. It also helps with any questions the reader may have. If the character is learning and developing through the story, the reader can then trust that their questions will be answered eventually or it gives you an opportunity to have that Greek chorus kind of character asking the question you know your readers are going to have. And finally, having a character learn about these kinds of things is great for when you have to bring something up later on in the story. Wait, did you say that the sword was made out of brass or the axe was? We can ask this question later on when the information becomes relevant again, because the character didn't know initially, they are learning, your reader is learning with them. Anything that needs to be brought up again can be. The next way that you can make your world building personal is to understand how your character understands the world. This comes out in your character voice, in their skills, their word choice, in what they choose to focus on. Something to also understand about your character is what their job is. That has a huge impact on how they see the world. If your character is a teacher, they're going to be thinking things like, oh, I can't wait to teach my students this. So if you aren't sure how to start creating the voice in connection to world building, start with the job. And on the flip side of that, look at the world that you want to create and what kind of jobs would come out of that. Mistborn, for example, ash falls from the sky every day. You need someone to really consistently sweep the streets so that it doesn't become a world buried in ash. So if you're having a difficult time making your world building personal, look at something like that. How can you take this cool element that you developed and narrow it down into practical things that your characters can be doing actively every day. 
If not job, if you're going for more of a swords and sorcery fantasy type setting, you might consider whatever deity that your characters follow. If this character follows a deity who really values note-taking, whatever this particular core value of the tenets of the faith are, how this character interacts with the world comes down to what the faith is. So not only are you doing world building with this particular set of faiths, but you can use that as a lens to explore the world and flesh out your character even better. And really just keep in mind that if you show the world through your character, through that point of view, it'll be far more interesting, it'll be far more entertaining, and memorable to your readers. That's really what matters. Readers don't comprehend info dumps. They comprehend and remember those moments that the character is marking as something significant and special and interesting in some way. And that is the best way that you can show your world off is by making it personal. Everything else we're going to say this month should be seen through the context of whatever your point of view character is doing. If you're writing an omniscient story, you don't necessarily have to. But keep in mind whatever your point of view character and how they are coloring the world that they see. Because the rest of it will not have any value if you don't have that emotional context, if you don't keep it personal, and if you don't write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 